Today we're going to be looking at the secret to setting and exceeding our goals. And I realize that there are four reasons why uh, many people don't have goals or don't set goals. And number one, that's because a lot of times they don't see the value in setting goals. And like for me, for much of my life, I didn't understand why, why set goals? Why is that even important? And number two, one reason why people don't set goals is because they don't know how to. They don't have the formula. They don't have the steps that God gives us in his word to be able to set these goals. We haven't been given training. Um, when I went through school, I didn't see a goal setting 101. Um, otherwise, I probably would have signed up for that class. But the another reason why we don't set goals is because we are uh, we have this fear of failure. We have this subconscious thought that, well, what if I set a goal and I don't accomplish it? And that paralyzes a lot of people. That paralyzed me um, for the reason why I didn't want to reach out or do something was because um, it would, it would like I thought, well, what if I, well, what if I try it and then I fail? And then I, I would be embarrassed or feel like a failure. And sometimes we have limiting beliefs. We don't have a definite aim. We don't have a purpose where we don't think we can accomplish things. Like the uh, Christ Object Lessons, this book says, uh, many people accomplish little because they attempt little. And many reasons why we don't attempt is we don't believe that we can actually accomplish what we're trying to, to do. And um, I, I want to read together some verses. In Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says, where there is no law, where there is no vision, the people perish. So God wants us to have a vision of where we're going. God wants to have a vision of the future. The vi that's why he gives us these prophets. Amos 3, 7 says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal the secrets to his servants, the prophets. So he even tells us things that are going to come to pass before they come to pass, so that when they do, we might believe. So Christ set, it tells us the future, and um, a lot of times he has time connected to it. Like, all of these time prophecies is God declaring what he's going to do. He's declaring the end from the beginning and he's letting you know when it's going to happen, which is, there's a lot that we can learn through the prophecies about goal setting. Another thing is, Jesus said, uh, I believe it was Luke 14, where he says uh, that no man builds a, a tower without first sitting down and counting the cost to see if he has sufficient to build it. So there is a level of planning that is involved that needs to be done in order to to set out and accomplish something the lord wants us to have a definite aim he has given us a great commission and we should plan for its advancement um and uh luke or actually it was um Sorry. Um, oh, uh, Philippians three thirteen. It says, "Brethren, I count myself. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus." So Paul was saying, like, look, I ha he had a mark. He had a target. He had a definite aim. There was something that he was pressing towards. And this is the same thing where God wants us to have goals so that we can press towards a mark. And with this limiting belief, like a lot of times we feel that like uh, we look at our inabilities or our lack of skills or lack of education, lack of connections, lack of talents or, or whatever, that we're like, oh, I can't do much because I haven't done much. But what Paul says is he's like, look, I for forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth to those things that are before. He's like, he realizes is that his past doesn't determine his future. And that he looks at what God has given him, the mark of our high calling in Christ Jesus, that high calling of evangelism. Like God has called us for a higher purpose than just living our lives, getting a good paying job, and then eat, work, sleep, eat, work, sleep. There, we have a higher reason for existing, and that's to win souls for Christ. That's to be active in his service. When you look also 
Um, another example of Paul is in 1 Corinthians 9.24. It's very interesting. He, he describes the Christian experience as uh, a race. It says in verse 24, Know ye not that they which run a race run all? but one receiveth the prize, so there's that mark, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore run not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body under subjection. Keep keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So Paul here is clearly showing, he's like, look, the Christian life is like running a race. And think about those those sprinters, those marathon runners. When they're engaged in the race, do you think they're thinking of second place? Are they thinking of fourth or 25th place? What is their goal? their definite aim. They're like, I'm going to get the prize of first place. Nobody's going there being like, oh, I want a bronze. Like, I really want that copper. Uh, I know like some people, they, some people just accept because they sometimes when they're competing with like, for, for example, like Usain Bolt, they know he's going to win. So I say, even if I get second place. Yeah. So sometimes people think like and, that. But and that's that limiting belief. God yeah, wants us to have a high, high calling. Aim for the best. Absolutely. <laughs> and and that's a thing where I realize that there's a lot of God's children when we are heirs of the kingdom, heirs of the promise, that God has has promised us amazing things. And He we have linked ourselves up with the one who knows no failure. When God says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, he doesn't ask us to stop and be like, well, is this going to work? Or is that going to work? Is this going to be a success? God makes himself responsible for its accomplishment. What does 1 John 5, 4 say? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Mm -hmm. So belief is a really big, important part of setting these goals and accomplishing what we're trying to do. We have to believe that Um, God is able to do that, but the only way we can do that is if we know that it's according to God's will. Because 1 John 5, 14 and 15, and this is the confidence that we have. Hey, let's all sing it together. And this This is is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, he heareth us, if we ask anything according to his will. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. First John 5, 14, if we ask anything according to his will. So this is a powerful promise that we can have a confidence, not an uncertainty, not a vagueness, but a confidence that that God hears us when we ask according to his will. And his will is his word. It's mapped out. If God has promised something, like... Um, if God has promised us something, then we know that we have confidence that he will give us the strength to accomplish it. So there are seven areas of life that we should um, do well to have goals in. And um, and like, like, for instance, we should have goals for our family. We should see what, what kind of family does God say that he wants to restore on earth? What are some character goals? That we have. Who does God want me to become? Who does God, what thoughts and feelings should I develop in order to, what habits should I form? Like what character goals should we, should, we should set out um, the, these goals that we have or, um, or spiritual goals. Like what are some things that we need to understand? Some things that we need to study, some, some sins to overcome or some, um, some like verses or chapters to memorize. What are some spiritual goals we can have? What are some goals that we can have with financial goals or things with business? Because uh, Romans 
says that that we that the Christian should not be not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So religion and business are not two separate things; they're one. And uh, we should have goals for social goals. What like our our um, interactions with each other? It's through the social relations that the gospel is given to the world. Luke two fifty two says, "In Jesus increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man." That's that is uh, the, you see these ways that he's increases in wisdom. That's mental. So we should have education goals. What are we going to learn? What what are what are we going to develop? Having goals in these seven areas of our life, uh, wisdom and in stature. So that's physical. So what are some of the health goals that we have? What are the laws of health that we want to improve in? What are the, uh, like, how do we want our, our body to be, what our health to be? What kind of exercise do we want to do? Or drinking water, it's whatever these goals may be, we should have physical goals. Increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. So that's spiritual, we covered that. And man, that's social. So all of these different, we, we should have, we should set goals in these seven areas of life. And um, a, a very good principle is that fuzzy targets don't get hit. Press towards the mark, on your marks get set, right, um, like aim, fire, um, where setting a goal is kind of like setting a target where, uh, or like hitting a target is that if you don't identify exactly where you want to be, or exactly what you want to accomplish or what God's plan is for your life in these areas, you know that, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. If there's some unhealthy habit you're trying to overcome, you don't have to question like, oh, does God want me to overcome this? Well, if it's destroying your health, then God wants you to overcome. You can have a confidence that all his bidding, all his Biddings are enablings. Every command implies or contains a promise. And that when man links his will, when the will of man links with the will of God, our will becomes omnipotent. He gives us all power in heaven and earth to accomplish the thing that he has called us to do. And so when we have these these goals, one thing that I realized that was life-changing for me, like this was a game changer. I really want you to understand this is not just having these like high and lofty, like, yes, we need to press towards a mark of a high calling. But a lot of times when we look at these, um, the, the high calling, we get overwhelmed when we see how, um, how much we need to do. And so it's good to have these stepping stone goals. Think about hitting a target. Let's say you have a bow and arrow and your goal is to shoot a target at 100 feet away and you've never done a bow and arrow before. Well, you're not gonna start off with 100 feet you're gonna start at 10 feet. See if you can hit the target with that, and once you do, throw it out to 20 feet. You hit the target with that, then maybe 30, 40, 60, 70, and then eventually work your way to 100. These are called stepping stone goals. When you do that, then it, it allows your goal to be broken down into smaller chunks, and it makes a tremendous impact on our life. Um, and. So like Proverbs 4.18 says, the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more to the perfect day. So I just encourage you that what you, what you should do in life is just pray to God and write, write down what are these seven areas of life and see, and just set some goals. Just see what does God want you to be in these areas. And in some future videos, we're gonna be showing exactly how to set these goals. How What is the formula, the, the method in God's word to show, to take it from a, an idea or a dream to fruition, to actually a reality in our life. Because God wants us to go from one glorious victory to another. And he has, in his word, plans to do that. So I, I encourage you, um, if you know someone who could be benefit from this, click share. Share the video with your friends. and Because I'm, I'm sure that someone else has a goal or should be encouraged to set goals who could learn as a result of you you sharing and comment below let us know what is what is a major goal in your life that you want to accomplish in one of these seven areas and um, I, I really look forward to seeing your comments I read every single one of them thank you very much for your time and for watching um, we look forward to seeing you again